Hello again everyone, this is part 2 of a two-part video lesson which covers waste management. Part 2 introduces landfill siting and design. Before watching this video, it is recommended that you watch part 1 first. Andy Long is the original author of this lesson. Support for the development of this video is given by the National Science Foundation through funding of the Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom Project at Ohio University. The procedure for designing a landfill is extremely time intensive and includes many considerations. Landfills are designed to accommodate a large amount of waste generated over a relatively long period of time. 30 years is a typical operating life for a new landfill. Future population growth, changing trends in waste disposal, and other contingent measures must be accounted for in this design life. Additional planning includes sizing of the landfill, sizing for disposal requirements, leachate control, treatment, and disposal, management of gaseous emissions, recovery of resources, and many other special requirements. Before construction on a new landfill can even begin, a site needs to be selected, all relevant permits must be acquired, the overall design needs to be completed, and a plan for the maintenance and operations should be drafted. As you can probably guess, Development of a new landfill is a massive undertaking. When an old landfill begins to run out of space, it is time for a community to start developing plans for a new landfill. One of the first and most important stages in landfill design is site selection. This is the location where a new landfill will be placed and used for a long period of time, so it is a very important investment. The major goal in selecting a new site for a landfill is to choose a site which provides the best protections to humans and the environment. A common approach to site selection follows five main steps. First, a definition of the site criteria is developed. Then potential sites are identified. An evaluation of the potential sites is done based on the defined criteria, followed by an evaluation of the sites based on field investigations, and then a final detailed site evaluation. Potential sites are continually eliminated through evaluations of increased scrutiny until the most suitable site is found. Site evaluations need to consider many different criteria, including environmental, economic, engineering, sociopolitical, geotechnical, and level 1 and 2 criteria. Environmental considerations take into account the effect the proposed landfill might have on the surrounding environment. Landfills produce harmful gaseous emissions, including greenhouse gases and dangerous volatile gases. Gases are produced by the decomposition of the waste by microorganisms, chemical reactions, and off-gassing or trapped volatile chemicals. Landfills also generate a toxic liquid stream called leachate. Leachate is generated as water drains from the bottom of the landfill. These waste streams have the potential to damage the quality of air and water, as well as surrounding ecosystems, so they need to be controlled and accounted for in design. Additionally, the large area of the landfill has the potential to alter local hydrological processes and might also require the removal of wetlands, forested areas, or other wildlife areas. Usually, areas where the addition of a landfill may adversely affect wildlife or hydrology are not considered. Overall, it is best to site a landfill in an area which will have minimal impact on the environment. Economic and engineering considerations take into account the feasibility of a site in terms of the overall economic cost, as well as in construction and operation. Cost is a large deciding factor on whether a potential site is a realistic option. Potential examples of economic and engineering considerations include the property value of the land, the economy of the surrounding community, operation and maintenance expenses of the landfill, and construction costs. Economic considerations are also wrapped up with other considerations. For example, if a landfill is built in the middle of nowhere, additional expenses would be incurred in transportation of construction equipment and garbage vehicles. Socio-political considerations include anything which may affect the public. This mostly has to do with the effect of landfills on public health and safety, such as the landfill's proximity to residential areas, the potential for disease vectors, and possible water contamination from leachate. However, existing land use considerations are also a factor. Historical sites and sites with cultural significance are generally off-limits. 
Geotechnical considerations deal with soil and hydrological characteristics and can be used to determine if a site has a suitable soil properties for proper landfill operations. Surveys are always done on very promising sites to investigate soil mechanics, which will aid in landfill design and construction. If the soil at a site is found to have very good drainage capacity, there is a probability for aquifer and water table contamination by leachate. Locations which are underlain by impervious soils like clay or silt are better candidates than those underlain by sandy or gravelly soils. Sites with well stratified soils are good choices because they provide workable soils for excavation and soil cover as well as impervious clay soils to protect groundwater resources. Additionally, sites with a shallow groundwater table may not be suitable locations for a landfill because there is less buffer distance to water in the event of a leaky liner. Constructing a landfill at these sites will limit the design to a shallow excavation, reducing the waste holding capacity of the landfill or requiring more land to compensate. Exclusionary criteria or level 1 criteria include mandatory standards for the siting of all landfills. If a potential site includes one of these items, it has to be discarded as a potential selection. If a site is located on a floodplain, is sitting on a major aquifer, is situated above underground mines or caves, is along a fault line, is, in, is on top or near wetlands, is a historic site, or it intrudes on the habitat of an endangered species, it is immediately removed from contention. These criteria have been established to ensure that a landfill cannot be built where it may endanger humans or wildlife. They also protect against the pollution of important water resources and ecosystems. Level 2 criteria are considerations which, while not necessarily deal-breaking, require a site to either be a certain buffer distance away or provide additional control measures. For instance, prevailing wind direction may carry unpleasant odors or light trash towards wildlife areas or residential areas. It might be necessary to build fences around the site or instead choose a site which is downwind. Additionally, proximity of the landfill to surface waters or drinking water wells requires a buffering distance or the implementation of monitoring wells and on-site treatment facilities to prevent against potential water contamination. Transportation issues may also be a factor. Proximity to waste generation areas or bridges with load limits require adjusting garbage collection routes, so it might be necessary to make a compromise on distance. After defining suitable criteria for the landfill location, it is time to determine a list of potential sites. Some common ways to identify initial landfill locations are through graphical methods, numerical methods, and the drastic method. Graphical methods utilize existing resources to aid in site selection. Typically this includes extensive soil and hydrological maps created by governmental agencies like the state EPA, USGS, and DNR. Preliminary designs are mapped using computer-aided design software and geographic information systems. Map overlays are referenced, and sites which have fatal flaws are discarded. Numerical methods go hand-in-hand -hand with the other methods. Criteria defined previously is weighted based on the importance of the project, with higher weights given to the exclusionary criteria. Each site is then evaluated on these criteria and given an overall score. Sites with higher scores are given more attention, while lower scored sites get discarded. The drastic method was developed by the EPA to assess a location for groundwater pollution vulnerability. Seven parameters which increase the potential for aquifers to become polluted are assigned weights. These parameters include depth of groundwater, net recharge rate, aquifer media, soil media, general topography or slope, beta zone, and the hydraulic conductivity of the aquifer. If a site receives a high score, it is not a suitable location for a landfill. In the event that leachate escapes from a landfill, it may easily contaminate the groundwater at these sites. The image shown here is from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. This is the groundwater pollution potential map for Ashland County. Colder colors denote less potential for pollution, while hotter colors denote a higher potential. As a final important note, selecting a suitable site for a new landfill is a collaborative process between scientists, engineers, politicians, and the public. The expertise of geologists, civil engineers, biologists, and hydrologists are all considered and weighed carefully before making a final selection. 
Now that we have selected some potential locations for our landfill, it is time to complete our design. A landfill is composed of several different components. A protective layer at the bottom of the landfill, which prevents leachate from entering the groundwater table. The landfill area where waste is disposed. A gas collection well, which diverts gas out of the landfill. A water treatment system, which pumps le leachate from the bottom of the landfill into a treatment facility on site. And monitoring wells bored into the underlying groundwater table, which can detect possible contamination from leachate. All of these components must be carefully designed and implemented to ensure proper landfill operation and safety. Landfill liners are designed to stop infiltration of leachate into the groundwater table. Additionally, the liner must also include a leachate drainage system to remove leachate from the bottom of the landfill. By using impervious clay soils or geosynthetic materials, the rate of water infiltration into the native soil below the landfill is slowed significantly. Designs for landfill liners come in two basic configurations, single layer or double layer liners. Single layer liners have a single drainage layer underlain by a composite geosynthetic liner and a compacted clay liner. Perforated PVC piping is situated in the drainage layer at the lowest point in the landfill. Leachate drains vertically through the above waste layers before reaching the drainage layer. Since the geosynthetic composite liner below the drainage layer essentially stops the flow of leachate vertically, the leachate is forced to drain through the PVC piping and is removed from the landfill using a sump pump located at the absolute lowest point in the landfill. Double layer liners are similar but have added protection below the first compacted clay layer. The second drainage layer in a double liner is monitored to detect for possible leaks from the first layer. The clay layer in a liner is extremely important in the protection of the groundwater table from landfill leachate. It is the last line of defense. The hydraulic conductivity, or rate of flow through the clay liner, should be less than 10 to the negative 7 centimeters per second. This means that for every second, ponding water on top of the clay with a height of 10 to the negative 7 centimeters will infiltrate through the soil. This is an extremely slow rate of infiltration. By contrast, a sandy soil will have a hydraulic conductivity that is 100,000 times larger, about 10 to the negative 2 centimeters per second. To calculate the hydraulic conductivity of our clay liner, we run infiltration tests during the construction of the liner. A metal ring is pushed into the clay and water is poured into the ring. The water level is then recorded over set intervals of time, typically around 30 minutes to an hour. From the observed drop in water level over time, we can thus get a rough estimate of the hydraulic conductivity of the clay. You will now plan, design, and construct a model landfill. Instructions are given on the associated handout, Landfill Design Activity. Following the procedure in this video, you will pick a suitable site, design a landfill liner, then construct a model of your landfill with materials provided to you by your instructor. Materials may include soils like sand, clay, and topsoil, as well as plastic materials like garbage bags, plastic drinking straws, pipettes, plastic shopping bags, and cloth. Compile all of your ideas, drawings, and calculate calculations into a final report. We will then test the landfill model over the course of a week or more using water dyed with food coloring as the leachate. Use the image shown as a basis for your design. This marks the end of part two. I hope you have enjoyed learning about all the different facets of the landfill design. Thank you for watching.